Hello everyone and welcome to my first video on the game Panzar. Uh, Panzar is a third person team based fantasy arena battle game. Uh, I've seen people compare it to a, uh, or say that it's a MOBA, like you know League of Legends or Dota. That is not the case at all. I, from what I've played there's very little between the two other than you do have a hero and he does fight people. Um, so we'll kind of jump into the game here. The first part of this video is going to be an introduction to the game and to the game systems, kind of explaining what you um, uh, can expect to you know encounter if you should play Panzar. So when you start the game up, we're going to start from the beginning here, you're going to be given this screen or sent to this screen and you're going to choose your first class. Now <clears throat> let me tell you that you have eight slots for your game. So you could have one of every single character if you choose to. Um, which is kind of cool because this is a free to play game and a lot of free to play games would kind of lock a lot of slots and be like, hey, do you want eight slots? Do you want to have enough slots to have, you know, one of each of our classes? Then pay for it. But at least they don't do that in this game. Now, they do allow you to pay for a lot of other things and we'll get into that here in a moment as well. Alright, so you have a Berserker, which as uh, you can see the roll is Damage Dealer and the Distance is Melee Combat. It kind of gives you a breakdown of some of his um, basic skills and then you know, a little background. And then this is kind of important as well, it breaks down the damage, his attack speed, health, movement speed, and difficulty to play. Then you can enter your name. There's also Tank, you can kind of guess what he does. Um, and also this is showing you armor that you could possibly get by the end game. This is not what you're going to start with and we'll also get to that here in a bit too. Uh, then you have a Paladin, he's kind of the healer support class of the game. An Inquisitor, which I think is basically the Rogue from what I've seen because he has invisibility, he can come out of the shadows and it seems like he can deal a lot of you know heavy burst damage. So for you Rogue players out there that's kind of your guy. We have a Sapper who is a support he can lay out down a teleporter, uh, so he can play like a teleporter at the spawning point and then lay a teleporter, a teleporter somewhere else and, well, you walk in and you come out the other side. Uh, he does some other cool stuff, he's also a melee combatant, and I think he does also have access to guns if you upgrade him right. Then we have a gunner, which, <laughs> he's pretty cool, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. He can lay down a turret, which I'm sure you'll see here when we jump into a game, and just unload bullets on the enemy team. It's pretty crazy, and he's he's pretty cool. Then you have the two casters, which you have a Frost Witch, who is a support um, caster, and then you have the uh, Sister of Fire. So I think she's more of just a high damage dealer. Yeah, yeah, there you go, roll damage dealer. And those are the classes. I kind of wish there was a gender option for each of the classes, but... Um, I don't know, maybe sometime in the future, but probably not. So anyway, after you choose your class, you choose your name, you're going to hit create. Uh, I'm going to hit back because I've already s created some characters here. I have a paladin, I have a tank, ooh, that was weird, and then I have a uh, sapper here. So this is some of the starting equipment that you will actually look like when you begin the game. Um, and me, I, I typically gravitate towards healers, supports, and tanks, so that's why I have my highest level levels are these two. Um, for this video... Let's jump into the tank role, because he has a cool ability that I would like to show off. So I'm going to enter the world. <clears throat> okay, so when you create this, your character, you're going to be brought to this screen, and it's going to ask you to do a tutorial. And it's going to ask you to do the tutorial on every character you make. Do it, because at the end of that tutorial, you're going to gain a level, and uh, you also gain 150 potions. Uh, 50 for health, 50 for mana, and 50 for energy, which I'll explain in a bit. So you always want to do the tutorial. And in fact, I don't even know if you can skip it. But anyway, you want to do it. <clears throat> okay, sorry, something in my throat. So, after you do the tutorial, I'm not going to show that, but after you do that, you're going to be brought back to the screen, and then this is going to be highlighted. This is your ability screen for your character. And these are your starting abilities. Actually, your starting ability would be this for the tank. And then you're going to get a skill point for each level of your character. So my guy is level 3, which is why... Or <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, he is level 3. I'm sorry. Uh, because you start with one skill and then I leveled up these other three. So there's a whole skill tree here that you can level up. I think the max level is 20. And it takes a while to level up if you're just playing the game. Um, but if you want... Whoops. 
you can hit this level up button and you can spend these gems, which is real money, you spend real money to get these gems to level up your character. You can do that all the way up to 20, which is crazy. I've never seen a game where you can buy levels. Now, that's probably going to make you say that, well, that's obviously buy to win, right? And, I mean, kind of. The thing is, though, from what I've heard, I have not experienced this firsthand, but from what I have read and from what I have seen, this game is broken down into brackets. So, like, characters 1 through 4 will be put together, I think it's 5 through 8 will be put together, so on and so forth. So, if somebody wants to come in here and level themselves up to 20 by paying money and spending these crystals, then they're only going to be target, or they're only going to go... <laughs> I can't speak. They're only going to be grouped with other people of their similar level. And then that's also kind of a detriment to you because there's also a forging mechanic. And uh, I'll click on the blacksmith forge here. So here you see a bunch of items. You can see their level that you have to be, how long it's going to take to craft them. And then up here it tells you the resources needed to craft. Now, the crafting system isn't too involved. At the end of a match, you gain three things. You gain money, experience, and resources. The resources, as far as I can tell, are randomized. So it's not like you're in a match and collecting you know, wood or bushes or anything, no. You just fight in a game. But at the end, you're gonna get resources. And then you can use those resources to craft different items. Uh, you can also purchase these items in the shop for real money, which is, again is the crystals. Um, you can also craft, let's go back, consumables. <clears throat> Man, I don't know what's wrong with me. Still kind of recovering over cold, so forgive me for the clearing of the throat. So consumables are very important in this game. Um, for tanks, the healing potions and greater energy potions are going to be your best friend. For like casters, greater mana potion is going to be your best friend. And whew, you can really chew through them. You can see I have 49 mana and 45 energy. I've used all 50 of my healing potions and I am only level 3. Um, and I use them pretty sparingly, <laughs> believe it or not. So you can also craft potions, um, you can also craft uh, forge slots. I haven't actually really messed with this yet, I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, looks like resources. Leather. Forgive me, I've only played this game for about four hours or so, so I'm kind of just showing you what I know. There are obviously still some things I do not know. So anyway, so there is a shop, you can also buy the consumable potions, and it looks like, you know, the consumables get upgraded as you level up because you have some level 5 stuff here. And then the armor. Um, and let me tell you, it takes a while to level up in this game. Like, a long time. But the combat is pretty fun so far, so I haven't really minded the long time to level, but I can see that being an issue. And it's it, it's obviously they want you to grind out and you they want you to have that feeling that you're grinding so that you'd be like you know what forget it i'm just going to spend money and i'm going to level up my character but you don't have to but it is an option i should also mention that every single time you level up your highest level character on your account not each character whatever your highest level character is when that person levels up the game will give you five crystals so i guess you know just know that and you can also exchange your crystals for gold. I don't think you can go the other way around. No. You can just exchange it for gold. So what is gold used for? Well, not that much. Um, gold is used to, I think, create a clan. And you can also use gold to... Oh, oh, whoops, whoops. Oh, well, there you go, here you go. Uh, one euro equals 25 crystals, in case you were wondering. I have not actually paid for this any of those yet. But anyway, gold is used for this upgrading. You can upgrade objects like your armor. So I can do upgrade. Choose an upgrade. Did it do it? Oh, start upgrade. And then it'll be 16 seconds. So you can see it's going to give this item plus 0.4 mastery and plus 1.1 health. I've never actually done this before. This is the first time for me. Uh, let's do start upgrade. So there you go. So another free-to-play mechanic is the whole crafting, how it, it can take some time. And you'll notice down here, you can be like, hey, how about I just speed this up by paying real money? So again, this entire game is littered with things you can pay for, if you want to. But you don't have to. Alright, so I've upgraded this item, and now it has plus 4.4 4 mastery and plus 1.1 1 .1 health. So armor is a big deal in this game. Uh, the better armor means you're going to have more mastery and more health. Mastery, if you hover over here influences most of your physical and magical abilities, uh, enhancing their overall effectiveness in battle. 
it can be increased by upgrading items in the forge so like i'm assuming that's a really important stat i again i've only played the game for four hours but that seems pretty important to me then you have your hit points your mana and energy so energy uh, it's going to be, I'll show you in the game, um, basically it's consumed whenever you run or whenever you do a power attack, which we'll get into when we get into a game. Mana is for your spells, that's pretty self-explanatory, and health, well, if you lose health, you die. So, there you go. Alright, next we have the character, and in this screen you can change a character to your others in your list if you want to. I'm not going to, though. Oh, I, okay, there we go. Um, again, altar is where you spend up your ability points. Fitting room, this is where you can change the color of all of your armor. You can also purchase different uh, facial stuff. Like you see, uh, you start with the cheat and stubble. But all this stuff costs real money from what I can see. So yeah, like all that. And you can also buy emotes. Yep. Thank you very much. I kill you. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> He's so sad. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you can purchase those with real money as well. And each time you want to change a color, you'll see down here, it costs money. So you can't even change a color for free. You have to spend for that one. Uh, you know, I mean, I wish they at, le at least let you change a color, but it is a free-to-play game, so they're going to try to get you wherever they can. Right, I'm just going to hit reset all. So that's what the fitting room is. Uh, that's where you put all your items and stuff. And then you have the social, which I haven't messed around much, but that's where you're going to get into your friend uh, list, your clan, tournaments, I guess. I have not even looked at this screen yet, but there are tournaments, so there you go if you're, if you're curious. And, hey, you know what? You can invite a friend and you'll get a bonus. Uh, I've not tried that either. Alright, so that kind of breaks down all of these different tabs. Now let's actually jump into a game. Oh yeah, you can also buy a premium account, which kind of gives you more bonuses at the end of a combat and... All this other stuff, I haven't messed around with it though. Okay, so let's hit play and actually show you what this game is like in action. It looks really good. It is so pretty. It is. It really is. Um, I well, you'll see here in a minute whenever we jump into a game. But it looks great. Oh man. All right, so we're going to the map, Cursed Altar. You can see there at the top. I'll show you what this game is all about. Mm -hmm. Kind of long load times. Okay. So, before every battle, you have some time to kind of look around. But look at this map, man. Like, look at the background. You can't go back there. But look at the detail put into the background. Like, this game just looks so... Oops. Kind of pause it there. This game looks so pretty. So, you run by holding down the shift key. Um, you can block. Blocking does reduce damage. Uh, attacking with left mouse button, and then if you right mouse button, you do a power attack. Power attack is going to use energy. Sprinting is going to use energy. Energy does run out. You can um, you can't get some by using a potion, which is the energy potions, the yellow one. Uh, the bad guys all are marked by these banners. So unmarked people do not have banners, bad people do have banners. And the whole purpose of this specific mission is to capture all control points. So it's kind of like a rush map from Battlefield. We have to capture control point 1 at the top middle there, and then after that we can capture control point 2 and we'll win the game. Most of the maps I play are King of the Hill maps, which are small arena maps where you capture only one point. Alright, so everybody getting frozen there is the uh, Frost person you can see in the middle there she's kind of dancing around she emits this frost aura that freezes all enemies and it is pretty powerful it's great and I just killed that guy so there's some turrets going down my tank ability that uses mana is a shield he's just like come on get some and this blocks all projectiles in that little blue aura so that's one of the tanks abilities now we're gonna rush up they destroyed that gun turret we have captured control point one so now control point two is already uh, free to, to get we have a dude up there on the wall trying to shoot us. Little punk. I don't think I can even reach him. So I'm just going to go up uh, these stairs to control point two. But yeah, the, the game just looks so pretty. Looks so damn... Oh, whoops. Kind of... Oh, shit. Whoops. Oh, I'm going to run away. Going to run away. And then block. All right, no one's trying to shoot me. Um, I need the healer. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. So what you want to kind of do is block the person's initial strike, especially if it looks like they're going to power attack, which has a long wind up like that. That's a power attack, and I just got hit by it. 
Oh man, I just got killed by some fire spell, I think. And then you want to try to counterattack. So the the combat does have some skill involved into it. You can try to be all spamming, just keep swinging. You may get lucky, but against somebody who blocks and like you know quickly attacks after your attack, you know you're you're gonna lose. So now we got to get to the second control point, which is up these stairs. The defenders have a defender's advantage of being able to set up their turrets on this uh, you know these walls over here, but they did not. We have a sapper, or yeah, I think it's a sapper, set up his little gun turret here. He's gonna get inside, and I'm gonna go up to the main point. And that is a paladin behind me, that is a healer. We already have a support class here. Oh my god, I'm just getting nailed. So you see people trying to hit me, but my blocking is taking away a lot of the damage. And the tank also gets energy when people hit his shield. So a way to restore energy really quickly is to block a lot of attacks. I'm going to try to power attack this guy for a lot of damage. You can see the damage at the bottom of the screen, 177, 282. So this is to kind of tell you where it's at. There at the bottom. Now I'm going to block. I'm going to go after this healer. Boom! And you can see that he is being frozen by our support caster there. I'm going to go back on the point to try and capture it. At the top middle, you can see the control point 2 is being captured. And look at this! As it's being captured, this this flipping platform raises up. It looks so flipping cool. It looks so cool. Alright, so she's going to freeze to try to get these guys frozen, obviously. So we can just kind of kill them really quickly. Now that power may seem overpowered. That, her ability may seem overpowered. Man, that was a very quick win. That, that team just got stopped. Usually these matches take a lot longer than that. But isn't that, isn't that so cool? How the point is being taken and then just flipping just raises up in the ground, or from the ground. Whew, anyway, a lot of talking here. So this is all your point breakdown at the end. Um, if you want to see how well you did, you can click on character info, see how much damage you inflicted, how much you took, you know, all that good stuff. You can also add a friend there. Then you click exit. It takes you back to the main screen. Okay, so when you reach level 4, under this, I think, is going to be a slider where you can choose to either get more gold or more experience, but only when you reach level 4. So I think that's there just so you can have more time to upgrade your equipment through the forge so you can gain more money and not that much experience so you know you can stay at level 4 for a longer time, get all the gear that you want, and then, you know, put that slider up to maximum experience to then level up after you're you know set to go up to level five so that is after every single match again it's not here because well I'm not level four yet but just to let you know and then down here you see all of the resources that you got for that match that's how much experience you got how much gold and then they have this button like hey if you were a premium member you could be getting all of this look at all of that <laughs> all these resources all that experience um, and then they give you the option to buy the premium. I'm gonna say no thank you, click OK, and there we go. That is a match, just a quick example. Um, and then I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Next episode I'm probably gonna show off some gameplay of my Paladin, because I, like I said, I really enjoy healers, I enjoy tanks. Both of these are really cool. That was a very quick match, not... I kinda wish it was a little bit longer, but I'm sure in the future you'll see plenty of gameplay if, if you want to. And I'll eventually probably create at least one of every character to show off gameplay of each class. So, thank you for watching my first episode of Panzar. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're interested in playing it, it's free to play. It's on Steam. Just look up Panzar and, you know, just download it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm sorry. Uh, so the game does look amazing, but it is also very scalable. Um, in the video options here, like I have it set on maximum quality, but you can go down to very fast on everything. And... I've seen examples of it, it kind of looks like vanilla WoW when it was released, maybe even worse graphics than that, so I imagine that means that this game can run on a very wide array of uh, computers out there. So you know, if you're sitting there thinking like, well there's no way my computer can run this, well you know what, download it, give it a try, you know, mess around with the settings, see if there's something that works for you, uh, because like I said, it, it, looks, <laughs> it looks really bad, but I mean I, I imagine they put that in there to try to grab as much of an audience as possible. Uh, so anyway, that was my first video on Panzar. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Take care, everybody.